Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we find ourselves in war-torn feudal Japan where the soldiers are restless. The endless battles, betrayals, and broken promises have the soldiers questioning where their loyalties lie. Meanwhile, the daimyo are strategizing, marshalling their troops, and erecting strongholds to bolster the strength of their armies, all in pursuit of honor and ultimate victory. Gunkimono, which is a Japanese word that means war tales, is two to five players, and you take on the roles of these daimyo, plotting their military advances across the countryside. Now, each new squad of troops yields victory points, but you may decide to forego these points and save up for your stronghold instead. All the while, you need to keep an eye on your opponents so that their forces do not grow too large and expand at your expense. Gunkimono is a tie lane game that takes 30 to 40 minutes to play and is for ages 10 and up and published by Renegade Game Studios. Today, I'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now, I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video, just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Well, let's get started. Gunky Mono is a tile laying game for two to five players, so you'll be laying tiles on a board and choosing between points now or moving up tracks, which will give you more points later. When going for points now, you'll get points for each of the adjacent areas of that type that you've helped build. And if you're going up tracks, you can use however many icons are here to go up. You can also use single tiles to help score things, or you can use them to help lift yourself up to get to the level needed to make your tile level. And once your honor gets high enough so all of your honor tracks are equal to one of your strongholds, you'll be placing it in an area that you'll be able to score once each round so people are going to be trying to cut off your stronghold. And if you race up the tracks and you're the first one to get there, you'll get the most randomized points, and this goes down the later and later you get there. You also get to see which tiles are coming up next that you can select from and watch what other people take, which helps in the strategy. And it's a quick game played in under an hour that has lots of depth but simple rules. To set up, each player is going to choose a color. And from that color, you will get a daimyo tile, two strongholds, a daimyo figure, and five honor markers. Any colors not being used can be left and put back in the box. The player who has most recently been to Japan will be the start player, and you're going to take the start player sword. If no one's been to Japan, do this randomly. In this case, we're playing a three-player game. Every player will place their daimyo figure onto the zero scoring marker, and you can put the other ones here. They're all considered being at zero points. Next, each player will place both of their strongholds, one in each of the sections that have the player count. Today we're playing with three players, so each player will place one stronghold in the three-player spot here and the other three-player spot here. You can stand them straight up, but for the video, you can see the detail better laying flat. Each player will take all five honor markers and they'll place one in each of the spots at the bottom of the honor track on the bottom left hand side of the board. You can stand them up if you have more players, but I'm putting it this way so you can see what they look like a little easier. Next you'll locate the 15 war banner tiles. These are Lotus, Crane, and Dragon. Each of the sections you'll shuffle up and place in a line just like this. Then you'll take the dragon and you'll place it on top of the crane just above it. And then you'll take both of those and place it on the lotus just above it. So it has a stack where it goes dragon, crane, and then lotus. You'll do that for all of these. Place each of those stacks in the same row depending on the amount of players. If there are five players, they'd go here, four. In this case, we're playing with three players, so they'd go here. Special note, if you're playing with two players, you do not use the lotus. So all of the blue lotus tiles will be gone. So all you'll have is a crane, and then on top of that is a dragon. Just below the game board, which will be in the middle of the table, locate and place all of the face down large tiles. It doesn't matter how many stacks you make, three works well. With four or five players, you'll use all the tiles. With three players, you'll randomly remove 10 of these tiles, place them back in the box face down without looking at them. With two players, you'll remove a total of 20 of these tiles, placing them in the box without looking at them. Then deal three of those large tiles face down to each player. Now that player can look at these tiles, but they want to keep them secret from other players. Also, give each player five of the smaller tiles, one of each of the colors, and they can place those face up in front of themselves. 
Now that all the tiles have been given out, from the supply stacks that you made earlier, randomly pull five tiles of here, and you're going to place them down here face down just like this. Now, in addition to these five, you're going to take the gunky mono tile, flip it over so it's face down, and add it to these five, so that you actually have five plus one or six tiles here. You are going to shuffle these up, and then once they're shuffled, you will place the five plus one tile on top of it, so you actually have a stack just below it like this. You'll then take the stack and place it off to the side for now. This will come into play towards the end of the game. Finally, from each of these three stacks, flip one face up so that there's three tiles that everyone can see. The object of the game is to have the most points at the end of the game, and you'll get those by playing tiles onto the board and some end game points by getting some of these war banners. Turns go clockwise in this game, and on your turn, you're simply going to be placing a tile out on the board. You're going to be scoring points in various ways, and then you're just going to be refilling your hand of that tile. Then it will go to the next player's turn. When placing a tile, most of the time you'll be placing one of these larger tiles that, if you look at it, has two little mini tiles built into it. When you place this on the board, you must make sure it lines up with the grid, and you can never place it so that the same color or troop that is just on top is covering whatever is below it. For example, I could not put this one right here because this green troop is on this green troop. Now thematically, the different colors stand for different troops. Blue is infantry, brown is samurai, green is cavalry, orange is spearman, and yellow is archer. For the rest of the video, just to keep things simple, I'm going to be referring to them as those colors. So again, you cannot place a tile if either side matches the color that's below it. You also cannot go off the grid like this, including the spots that have a little open notch grid. You cannot put tiles in like that. But let's say we put it like this. Once you've laid a tile and it's a legal placement, you can score points, and there's different ways to score. You get to decide which type of scoring you want for both sides of the tile that you've placed. Here we see this green troop is adjacent, diagonal does not count, adjacent to two other troops of that color. So when we place this, we could take victory points equal to each of the troops, including the one we placed and the ones that are adjacent. So in this case, we could get three points for the green troop for this side of our tile, and we can go three points up the score track. And when moving on the score track, just move your daimyo figure. It is legal to have multiple people on the same score. Now we can score the other side of this tile. This is blue, and there's two there. We could also go up two more victory points in blue if we liked. However, instead of taking victory points, you can also take honor points, but you have to choose between victory points or honor points, and you're choosing between them on both sides of the tiles. So let's revisit this. Instead of taking the three victory points, you can take honor points equal to the number of strongholds on only the tile that you've placed on that side. For example, here, since there's two strongholds here, we could go up two on the honor track, which is this track here at the bottom. So we could go up two on the green track instead of taking those three victory points that we just showed you. So in this case, we're red, we can move up two on the green track just like that instead of taking those victory points. And for the other side, for the blue, instead of taking the two victory points, we could take a single honor track point because there's only one stronghold uh, uh, logo there. So in this case, we could go the red player, that's us, we could go up one here. Now in this case, we took honor points for both. In the previous case, we took victory points for both. And again, you're deciding either or. So you can either take honor points on both, victory points on both, or you can split it. I might wanna take the three victory points here, but the honor points here, or vice versa. I might wanna take the victory points here, two points, but go up two on the honor track. It's totally up to you, but you have to decide for each side of that tile. In the early stages of the game, once you've played your tile and gotten your points, you will then take a tile. You'll either draw one of the face up three that are there, or you could take one of the face down tiles. If you take a face up tile, you will then immediately replace it for the next player. If one of these stacks run out, simply redistribute the face down tiles into different stacks. It doesn't matter how many stacks there are, but there should always be three face up tiles to choose from. Then it would go to the next player's turn while they would lay a tile down. Now a few more notes on laying tiles. When you lay a tile down, it can be oriented in any direction. It does not have to be face up, but again, you cannot cover any of the same colors like I said before. But if someone laid this down and they wanna go for honor points, moving up the honor track for this, they would go up two because there's two strongholds here. You do not connect all of these and then say you can go up four stronghold points. That is not legal. When you're taking victory points is when you count the number of tiles adjacent. In this case, they would go up four points. 
But if you're going up the honor points, you only take the stronghold on the tile that you've laid, not the ones that are adjacent to it as well. Now on your turn, instead of placing one of the large tiles, everyone started with five small tiles, one of each color. On your turn, you can place one small tile out. So you could do something like this, again, never covering the same color. So this player could get two honor points going up the honor track or get one, two, three, four, five victory points because they made that army in green that big. It would then be the next player's turn, and if you place one of these small tiles as your turn, you do not draw another one of the large tiles, because you always have three in your hand to choose from. Now there's another use for those small tiles. If you notice, these have tiles on it, it's at sort of a level of one, and this is flat on the board. When you lay a tile, it has to be able to lay flat. It can't be, uh, you know, uneven like that. So, on your turn, you can spend one of those small tiles of yours, and you can place it face down on top of something, in order to then place a tile on top to make it flat, but it has to be flat when you're done, and you can only use one small tile and one large tile. So that allowed this player to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven victory points if they wanted victory points for green, but that's another way of using the small tiles, and in that case, at the end of your turn, you would still draw a large tile because you used one. So what does this honor track and these honor points allow you to do? Well, on your turn, if you're able to move your honor markers so that all five of these are at least even with one of your strongholds, you immediately must build that stronghold out on the board. And you'll usually want to do it in the largest single area because when you place your stronghold here, this entire region that you've created is your stronghold's region. And this is exactly where your stronghold is. Now this means a bunch of things. Well, the first thing is there's an additional step after you score your normal points to score your stronghold. It's called assessing stronghold. And in this case, this stronghold has a region of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This player would get nine points. Now, this player cannot get points when they lay a tile uh, for normal victory points and then assessing stronghold points. So if this player plays a tile like this, they're not gonna get all of these points once and then get them all again for assessing the stronghold. However, they can add to this, which is going to be getting them points that turn for assessing the stronghold, but you can't double dip with those points. So usually you'll be creating your area to be bigger and then you'll be taking the uh, honor points here for that specific color. You can continue to take points building other regions as normal. Players can place tiles that increases the stronghold of a different player. They cannot get victory points for this, they can get honor points, and it's usually not advantageous to do so. Also, it's possible that someone else might have a stronghold with the same color troop, and nobody can place a tile that would merge together the areas of two different strongholds. And it's quite normal for on other people's turns to be laying tiles that cuts that player's stronghold to a smaller amount, which will get them smaller points during their turn when they're assessing their stronghold. So if you have a stronghold on the board, the turn flow is you place a tile, you score the points, then you assess your stronghold. Then you refill the tile, and it's the next player's turn. So in this case, if I was the red player, I place this tile, I could get one, two, three points if I want, or one honor point, and I can get one, two victory points, or two honor points, then I'll still assess my stronghold and get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven victory points. In some player counts, it's possible for all five markers to reach both strongholds in the same turn. In that case, you'd build one stronghold this turn and the second stronghold the next turn. Otherwise, you'll get your second stronghold when all five at least equal where your second stronghold is, and you'd follow the same procedure I just mentioned. And in the very rare case that you have gotten all your pieces to your stronghold, but there's already too many strongholds out there and there's no single region that you can put it in, you'll just try again next turn after you score points. Now, if going up this honor track, any of your pieces meets the war banner tile, you'll take the one that's on the top and you'll put it secretly, this is face down, in front of you. The numbers here tell you what is the possible point value here. It's going to be between 11 and 15, and there's one of each of them. So you could secretly look at it and go, ooh, 14 is not bad. It's one of the better ones. But you keep it face down. These will be revealed at the end of the game. And as you can see, the second person to get there will get the 6 to 10, and the third person will get the 1 to 5. Remember, you don't use these ones in a two-player game. Once they've met this, they stay off the track. They will not come back on it again. This turn flow will continue until when the last of the tiles is revealed, then you'll take the stack of tiles that you set aside at the beginning of the game and you'll place it just like that as the draw stack. 
You then can remove this top one. This just shows you that one of these six tiles is going to be the Gunky Mono tile, which will trigger the end of the game. So when someone takes a tile, either from here or here, and the Gunky Mono tile is revealed, that triggers the beginning of the end of the game. You will continue around so that each player has an even amount of turns, remembering that the player sitting just to the right of the start player sword is going to take the last turn of the game. If the player who is sitting to the right of that is the one that flipped this up, the game ends immediately. At that point, each player is going to flip over all the tiles they may have gotten, and they're going to add these points to their score. And if you pass the 100 mark, you can flip over your Domino tile to show that you have 100 plus whatever's on the board. Whoever has the most points is the winner. If it's tied, whoever has the most troops as part of their strongholds will be the winner. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Gunky Mono and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have any further questions about the rules, I placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask it, because not only will I be able to see it and get notified, but so will Renegades Game Studios. This has been the Game Boy Geek, helping you find and enjoy the next board game you'll love.